Good morning guys, it is Jonathan with One Big Impact. I wanted to cover a video today on basically how to squat more. So, do yourself a favor, grab some coffee, and let's get started. Alright, so, basically, I have five, six, maybe seven tips on how to help you squat more. One of the most important things, I think, is, and this goes above and beyond all else safety first okay um, if you're squatting heavy and you don't squat heavy normally don't squat heavy um, I know that sounds kind of contrary to the video purpose but the I guess in the, in the big scheme of things a lot of people would not understand that you just can't get under a bar and randomly squat a huge amount of weight some people do have a gift to be stronger in the beginning than others, but that does not mean that you want to improperly, dangerously, just randomly go load up the bar in a Planet Fitness on a Smith machine with like 15 plates. Don't hurt yourself, okay? First of all, don't squat in a Smith machine rack. <laughs> you can, you can, but it wouldn't be the same squat. If you're squatting for powerlifting purposes or bodybuilding purposes, I would probably try to stay out of it. You could do some bodybuilding stuff for squats in uh, Smith machine, but I'll be completely honest. Personally, it's pretty damn painful, so I don't do it. Now, I think um, if you're squatting alone, that's okay. Uh, make sure your safeties are in. A good way of gauging where your safeties are is before you load the bar, squat down and you want to squat like you were squatting regularly, look over and you want those safeties just a little bit lower than like your shoulder or wherever the bar path is going to be so that if you do have to fail, you want to fail the right way. So you would hit those and just fall forward or just fall forward and grab onto the uh, ground with your hands and the safeties will catch the weight. Do not ever squat heavy without your safeties. Now I know I got that out of the way and I'm not trying to be a pain in the ass, but I am a personal trainer and I do think it's important. By the way, if you're looking for a structured program or you want to squat more or you feel like you don't really know exactly what's going on, maybe you're looking for an online personal trainer, shoot me a message. Um, you can email me at T-H-R-I-F-T-T-I-M-E at gmail.com, thrifttime at gmail.com. Now, to get into the meat and potatoes, a year ago, well, if you if you rewind it about two or three years ago, I'll be completely honest with you, I never really squatted at all. I was the anti-squatter. I was the guy that would literally put a thousand pounds on the leg press and think it's going to be working. About a year ago, I took squats, maybe a year and a half ago. I started taking my squat uh, a little bit more seriously and I was on a mission and I was like, you know what? I want to see what I can squat. So with the wrong shoes, no wraps, just kind of balls out, did it. I found out that my squat was extremely poor at a whopping 300 pounds. Um, and I look back at that video and Maybe at the end of this video, if I get a chance, I'll put um, a side-by-side. -side. I will put a side-by-side -side in this video showing you exactly what my squat looks like compared to what it was before. These damn gnats are driving me nuts. There's a trap over there. Go in there. Um, but it was at 300 pounds. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and this is about a year ago, roughly without knowing exact days. About a year ago, that was 300 pounds. A few days ago, I hit a 500 pound squat. So with the tools and things that I'm gonna give you, I'm not saying you're gonna have a 200 pound increase. You may have more than that, you may have less than that. <clears throat> but I do know that you're going to be in a better position to squat and you're probably going to bring up your numbers significantly, especially if you're doing something wrong. Just the basic fundamentals of the squat pattern. Um, if you're bodybuilding, you want to get the top of your leg to parallel, meaning like your quad 
if I look at you from the side, should look like this. So you squat down and your leg should be right here, the top of your leg it should be flat. Now, if you're trying to get below that, this being your quad, this being your leg and ankle, you're going to need to drop your hip hinge just below that, if that makes sense. And you can Google anything. If you're doing this for a competition or powerlifting, you have to get down to the right position. So make sure you understand what that is. Um, two totally different squats. If you are not squatting at least a parallel, stop fucking adding weight. You're going to hurt your knees. Don't be dumb, okay? It's very simple to set up a little tripod and or have a buddy um, hold your phone or some random person hold your phone, lean your phone up against the weights to check, make sure your squat is to depth before you're starting doing anything else. I would much rather somebody squatted to depth with a bar rather than doing a half little bullshit curtsy squat or whatever with 300 pounds stop doing that shit okay you're gonna hurt yourself and you're not getting fucking stronger you're getting worse at depth okay so if you're not dialed in on your depth and you're not hitting depth at least 99 percent of the time don't add weight first thing that i want to talk about is going to be bar path okay now i'm going to take all of this stuff out of my computer I'm gonna try to walk over here and show you what our bar path should be so coming over here I don't have a regular bar set up but I can set you up here and the reason I'm covering this stuff is because Although it seems silly, many people do not understand. And there's nothing wrong with not understanding how to squat properly. So, let me grab a bar. Not a bar that I like. But, that's okay. Now, I'll be completely honest. Because this is not a bar that is very loaded... I have a very, very hard time getting the bar into the right position on my back, so bear with me. And there's a little side tip right now. When you walk into a squat rack, I've got these hooks, and they look more like the J hooks. They're over there. These are just extra hooks I have. You want this uh, J hook or whatever to be at mid shoulder. Because I'll show you in a minute where the bar should be on you. So, ideally, you should be pushing this bar in a straight line, straight and up, straight and up. If I put two 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 by fours right here next to each other with very little to no play, and you had to run that bar through there, if you can't squat like that or very close to it at least, then you probably need to practice your perfecting your bar path. So coming up to the bar, and remember, I'm not going to be able to get this sucker into the position that I need to because it's not loaded right now. So most important thing, get your feet set up. Try to watch that bar path. The idea is not to squat like this. Do you see how that bar path comes forward? This bar path needs to stay as close as you can to straight. So dropping it straight down and straight up. Okay, straight down, straight up. Every time, straight down, straight up. What you need to recognize and remember is perfect form on a squat does not necessarily mean you're going to be comfortable. My whole theory behind getting better at a squat is, or bench or deadlift, 
if you are in, ex in an extremely rigid, firm, and locked in position, you're going to be in the best position to move the most weight. You got to remember, you got hundreds of pounds of steel on your back, okay? And I'm sorry if my bar path was not perfect. I'm going to get some internet trolls out there that are going to say something bad. It is 2 o'clock in the morning and I'm at the gym and I just woke up, so I'm stiff, whatever. But you get the idea. Bar path straight up, straight down. If you're not extremely rigid when you're moving this bar, this bar and the weight on back of it is going to take you straight to the ground. Okay? So be extremely, extremely locked in tight on all of the exercises, especially the compounds, but really for sure on the squat. The next thing is going to be the bar placement on your back. Now, you have two different types of placement. I mean, maybe there would be other types of placement. I don't really hear about anything else. You have high bar and low bar. And basically what those are is these two positions, okay? So I'll show you high bar first, which I do not use, but I did before. So I come here, I get under here, step up. This is high bar. Do you see how it's on my neck, traps, something like that? The next one, is the one I use. And this is tilted, by the way, so one's higher than the other. It's a little wonky grabbing the bar. The next one is called low bar position. You're going to rest it on your rear delts. So you come under, and I'm actually having a good time getting under this bar, which is really rare right now. I don't know why my shoulder mobility is so good. I got 450 for five yesterday. Now, if you can see how much lower that is, it's going to be, and I can do a whole video on bar placement because it makes a massive, massive difference. As a side note, if you get any pain or anything when you're squatting in your elbows, um, in your wrists, I'll talk about some equipment that you can use in addition. But importantly, it could be your grip. Your grip could, I'm a big guy, okay? I noticed right away, maybe that's why I was able to get it back there a little bit further because I went a little bit wider, okay? But what I noticed is I actually used to come right here on the shiny part, right here on the shiny part and go under. Funny enough, I am now like out here when I do it, a good four or five inches difference. Now, I will say you gotta be careful because if if you're a little guy or something like that and you don't have a huge back that you're or like a locked in chest where you can't get back there um, you're going to sacrifice a lot of tightness like your back is going to lean you're going to lean really hard so make sure you're doing that because it is a better overall position for the entire squat not just because you are trying to uh you know pussyfooted or you're trying to get into a, a more comfortable position or whatever. If it truly is more beneficial to your squat, then widen up your stance and that's okay. But the, you can also do a thumbless grip. Thumbless grip has helped me immensely. You want to make sure your elbows are kind of shooting back a little bit, but at the end of the day, it's most what's, what's best for you. Those were all a bunch of extra things. I'm sorry, but, um, I just feel like a lot of them are extremely important. Now we're moving on to, that was a lot over there. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. We're moving on to number three, okay? Number three is going to be belt, sleeves, and wraps. And you could even go squat shoes as well. I'm going to put in the link in the description below. By the way, please like our videos. Please subscribe and please comment. It helps me out so much. I'm going to um, put in the link in the description below the knee sleeves, the wraps, everything I use. Okay, so first of all, this is going to be an Arsa weight belt. Okay, this is like a new product out there. Um, it's got the it's a lever action belt. You can 
adjusted on the back, which is kind of nice, and it's got plenty of adjustments. And the only reason I'm showing you that and getting specific is it's a $35 belt. I could not believe it, and it's 10 times better than my last one, and my last one was twice the price. So the next one is going to be my squat shoes. A lot of people are going to ask a lot of different questions on squat shoes. What exactly do they do? Are they worth the purchase? Depends on you, okay? If you're squatting in tennis shoes like these, this is going to be a shoe that can roll around, okay? The difference is height. This one will be much higher in the back than it is in the front and could put you at a very bad position. But I think the most important thing for most people if you're wanting a good squat shoe is it's a very fat, flat, blade, a flat base. Other shoes are meant to give you a little bit of give because it feels better. You wear them all day. It's more comfortable. These are not meant to do that. These are meant to do the exact opposite. It's a very hard, like rocky base. And that is so that you are pushing from a good platform. What you can do to test to find out if a squat shoe is good for you is squat without shoes. Just do an air squat to the ground or you can throw a little bit of weight on you. Squat to the ground, and then if that works okay, fine. If it does feels a little bit weird, maybe your ankles uh, come up a little bit or something like that, then if they do, you can put like a half inch mat under your foot and then squat again. How does that feel with a little bit of weight on it? And then if that doesn't work, how about an inch mat? Whatever one of those works the best and feels most natural is going to be the height of your squat shoe, the heel. So just keep that in mind. It's kind of like a quick little tip. Um, and I think these are one of the least expensive ones, right around 80 bucks. You might be able to find some better ones or for some cheaper ones, but I'll be completely honest. Um, I'm not all about expense. I'm all about functionality. These are going to be my knee sleeves. They're a little bit torn up. Um, I had knee sleeves previously before these and they sucked. I would definitely go with these. These are the Noble Weeds, or Noble, uh, that's actually a brand. Iron Bull, one of my clients just got those shoes. Iron Bull Fitness uh, knee sleeves. Seven millimeter if you're using USAPL, and also the belt is a competition belt as well. So if you're needing that. And then the shoes are totally acceptable. And these are going to be the wrist wraps. These are Dark Iron Fitness wrist wraps. I'll be 100% honest, one of my clients actually ordered hers and they were too big for her, so she gave them to me. I usually wouldn't buy this. This is kind of like a, it's not really bougie. It is my favorite colors, black and red, but it's like a leather and maybe not everybody will like that. I will say after a little while, they do have a little bit more give and they, they have become by far my favorite wrist wraps. And I'll link all of those in the description below. Knee sleeves are going to give you maybe five, 10% on your squat. They're gonna help you out a lot. The next one, um, the belt. The belt is extremely good because you're going to le need to learn how to breathe and brace. Um, and I can talk about that in another video if you guys are curious about how to breathe during squats. Um, but it's really important and I let you, there's, I'm not saying that you can't squat beltless and you can, and I think, but I think eventually there's probably going to be a point to where you're going to be wanting to take it to the next level and put a belt on. And I think for the average gym goer, you should have some type of belt to keep yourself safe. Um, but I think more importantly to breathe and brace so you can actually create a lot more core strength and kind of like a front spine if for lack of better terms. Uh, the next one is form first. Like I said before, if you're not at depth, stop adding weight. Figure out your form with the bar, without the bar. I will say with you adding a little bit of weight can help because if you squat normally and you happen to be really back heavy, like got a big butt or something like that, you'll tend to tip over a lot in the back. So if you actually have a bar on your neck and you're going down, you're going to be in a better position to kind of cantilever yourself out. So that can be a good way. Add a little bit of weight and then practice um, squats and just camera yourself, video yourself. The next thing is going to probably be 
one of the most important structured program if you want to bring your squats up get on a structured program stop guessing weights I'll be the first to tell you I'm a personal trainer I know what the hell I'm doing but if I go in the gym and I'm not following a program I will miss squats left and right and it's very discouraging because you can't just be like I'm strong today I think I did 350 last week maybe I'll do 385 this week it does not work like that it does not work like that you got to go slow with the program and you got to follow make sure you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing I hope this information helped you I would say the single most important thing for me um, that I saw the most improvement from was the low bar position um, helped me a lot uh, I got a 60 pound PR in one day just by getting down to the low bar I will say don't rush it take your time learn your grip um, it can be very painful in the beginning when you're getting to that position warm up your shoulders get like a piece of PVC pipe and run it like this run it back and forth and run it over your head and just kind of warm up those shoulders and get them in a better position if this video did help you please like share comment and subscribe to our channel if you would that would be great if you want to link in the description in the comments below uh, what your current squat is and maybe a video to it that would be really cool like your squat max I would be excited to see it and support your channel as well um, and remember this the sleeves Everything is going to be in the description and it helps me out immensely if you purchase them through there. Thank you guys so much. Have a good day.